What's up YouTube and knife people, I'm Joe, you're watching my channel Ink and Iron, and I'm back with a knife review. This is a rare sight lately. Rake reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to review our new model? And I said, uh, yeah, actually, because they sent me a few pictures and I was like, that does look up my alley. So let's talk a little bit about this blade. It is 14C28N Sandvik Steel. That is one of my favorite budget steels. Uh, I think it takes a very sticky, sharp edge, and this one is no exception, coming straight from the factory. Let's use some paper. It looks like it's hanging up, but I think that's my technique. Uh, reaching around the camera is not the easiest way to do this. But yeah, comes nice and sharp, well ground, even blade grind. It is a full flat grind, full height, flat grind, whatever you want to call it. It does have a thumb stud. Uh, I'm not a fan of this thumb stud. It really, you want to push up or you want to push diagonally. It doesn't really work like that. You got to push like sideways and the detent is super strong. It doesn't help that you end up curling your fingers around to the lock bar side. Um, so yeah, this is purely a flipper for me. Speaking of the lock bar side, it is blackened stone wash, just like the blade and the clip as well. We do have a gold little pivot ring, which is pretty cool looking, kind of a counter to uh, you know, a Kaiser or something like that. The action, it does drop shut, but it takes encouragement. It's very smooth, really not bad. At um, a price point of about I want to say this is going to be like 45 bucks, but I don't know exactly. Uh, the other models of P801s are, you know, about 35, so I couldn't see this being... If this is above 50, something's wrong. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good budget blade, as far as I can tell, just from initial impressions. The lockup is good, right? It is not fully traveling over, which is good. We have some wear still to go in this pivot system so should be a few years of solid use before that starts to show any signs that uh, it's failing it does have a detent ball probably part of the reason for the super strong detent on here there is no lock bar insert it is a steel liner so yep keep that in mind the pocket clip is very similar to uh, other pocket clips that I've seen this is a rake uh, multi-tool like a Swiss Army knife, basically. Pretty much the same clip. Even the button head screws are protruding into the into the clip area here. Um, this blade is super light and thin. Oh, by the way, you have a lanyard hole for you lanyard people. Uh, it is very light and thin. Honestly, the knife I want to compare it to in terms of its thinness is the Spyderco Chaparral, and I have reviewed this on the channel. It is extremely thin and compact, and uh, this budget blade is, is right in there for the running. Yeah, we're maybe a millimeter, maybe two difference in thickness, which is saying something. <laughs> Let's take a look at uh, what I would normally think of in a steel uh, frame lock, which is this Kershaw Emerson. Yeah, a lot thicker. The steel thickness is almost the same, surprisingly, but we didn't bother to do a second steel liner and sandwich G10 on top. We just went straight for G10. Uh, I don't think there's a liner in there. Yeah, no, it's, I believe it's just G10. Can I flex this? A little? It certainly doesn't feel squishy, and I have had other knives literally feel tactily squishy and uh, this one's not doing that, so I think the construction's a little bit a little bit better on this one overall. I think in terms of vibes, you know, it's probably a similar vibe to like the Civivi Elementum. You know, very similar edge profiles, similar handle lengths, similar generic looking handles. Pretty flat across the top, some jimping right here. You know, I, I think it's right in there with this. Now, of course, this is like a special edition uh, Damascus blacked out button lock elementum so you know maybe you can't get your hands on this anymore but the normal elementum is a steal of a deal and i feel like this is living in that same territory so yeah if you're budget-minded this uh could be an option for you 
And then a quick size comparison with our Spyderco PM2 Classic. Here it is with the Chaparral. Here it is with a classic uh, Victorinox knife. Okay, let's get a weight on this. The Rake P801G in grams is going to come in at 86.03 grams. Pretty impressive for an 86 millimeter blade length, which is 3.3 uh, inches. The weight in ounces is 3.035 ounces. So yeah, over three inches, right at three ounces. Uh, you know, this kind of has nothing fancy's name written all over it. <laughs> it's not doing anything uh, incredibly unique in terms of its design or its features, but I think it's doing the basics very well. So yeah, keep an eye on this. If you uh, liked this kind of video, you want to see more EDC gear, knives, uh, multi-tools, pens, typewriters, whatever I want. It's a vlog, you know. Like, sub, do the things, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, bye.